The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9.06 a.m. Eastern time. We got quite a day, folks. You got the ECB hiking their rates for the first time in more than 10 years, and they hike it by 50 basis points. A little bit of a surprise, especially where we started the week off. I kicked off my program on Monday. I was talking about the market was pricing in a 20% chance that they went to 50 basis points. By Tuesday, the market had a 50-50 shot that they were going to get there. Inflation is raging in Europe just like it is in the U.S., and they go to 50 basis points. We'll jump to that in a moment. Our markets right now, S&P flat literally to the tick as I speak. 39.62 in the S&Ps, quite the acceleration the last couple days. You look at this on a daily chart. That's Tuesday. You accelerate higher. Yesterday, you hold on to those gains. Today, we're inching even above that level. You look where we are compared to where we were at the end of June, just above those price levels now in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100. Interesting when you take a look at where we are to the beginning of June till the end of June, well above those levels. You're coming into a next stop. You're talking about basically 13,000 in the NASDAQ 100. You're up by a third of percent this morning at 45. We get all the big tech stocks next week. That's going to be a big one, folks. I believe we get... Amazon, Apple, Google, and Microsoft on Tuesday and Thursday. We'll jump over to them in a moment. But we got Tesla last night. Tesla shares up about $25. Decent action for Tesla. They sold a lot of their Bitcoins. I was joking around with friends last night. All anybody could talk about when, when Tesla was buying hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin was the fact that they were doing that. And yes, people are talking about it a lot that they sold, but not as much, I feel like, in even just a social setting, um, even just among friends, among group chats, among internet chats, not as big of a phenomenon that Elon gets out of many of those Bitcoins at a pretty decent price. 75% of the Bitcoin they unload at a price of about 30000 or something like that. So they avoid the worst of it in Bitcoin, even with Bitcoin catching a little bit of a bid up to 22700 We'll get into Tesla numbers, but nonetheless, strong numbers. They're higher this morning. You're trading up about $25 on the open for Tesla. We jump to commodities. Crude. We trade lower overnight. Crude below $95 briefly. We're trading at ninety six fifteen. We have some action in currencies, folks. And listen. Please head on over to the front page of TFNN. Try out the Tiger Forex report, folks. Teddy Kegstat, he just kicked off his newsletter. For this month, you can save 25 cent, uh, 25% by entering code Teddy25. I'll get it out. The ECB just hiked rates, okay? The reason why gold is moving this morning is because of currency action, because of interest rate action. That's it. There's many parts of this market, okay? And we're going to see how we open right now. Uh, many parts of this market that have to do with foreign exchange right now because the moves are just so dramatic. We're going to pull up the moves in the currencies in a moment, but gold catching a lift as what's going to happen now, folks. You're going to have the ECB beginning to hike rates. I mean, you got to keep it in context, though. All they did was they just hiked it to 0%. So, you know, quite a beat for the ECB to bring their interest rate to 0% as inflation is raging over there as well. But nonetheless, that's what they do. Okay, but they're going to begin to have higher interest rates. In the market, you're going to be attracted to higher yield. Okay, so now what's going to happen? The ECB, they're providing a yield that is now higher than it was. In theory, more money should begin flowing to that more attractive yield in the ECB. The, the U.S. is still way ahead of them, though, right? This is the whole saga playing out. Nonetheless, if, if the ECB interest rate becomes more attractive, people will need euros to access that interest rate in euros. Euros will become in demand. By euros being in demand, that will strengthen the euro. That may weaken the dollar. You're going to see it all play out. Please try the Tiger Forex report, folks. Even if you just use it for a month, I guarantee you'll get some value out of it. Maybe you don't think it's something that you can trade off of. You cancel, you get your money back guarantee, but try it out. You lock in 25% no matter what if you decide to continue and you still get that money back if you want a money back guarantee within the first month. It's a great deal and you're seeing the type of actions we get today when currencies move. 
Notes and bonds. We got some action as well, as you'd expect. The 10-year, there's your volatility on the news this morning. Now, we're talking about a 10-year yield right now. Where are we sitting? 3.03%. 3.03%, the yield on the 10-year. You back things up just for this week. Quite a pullback we've had since early on Wednesday, man. I think when I was doing my show, we were at 2.96 to start it off, maybe. Maybe 2.97, maybe something like that. Uh, rates climbing well above 3%, still above that level but uh, declining a bit as we have a little bit of higher price. Up three ticks right now in the 10-year. The 30-year is flat. We jump over to the VIX this morning. Volatility index trading 23.78. Had a great discussion going on on Fast Market yesterday at 12 about the VIX and just talking about, you know, the declining numbers. And maybe this is really starting to show because we are now below where you were in June, Okay. But boy, you see the VIX get down to this 20 level, folks, I'd be very careful in this market because right now with everything in flux, we're inflation where it is. I imagine it's only a matter of time until we get another spike and another sell off as the S&Ps approach 4,000 yet again. We were just at 3,600 and change, folks. We're trading at 3,963 and we come into it next week with all the earnings. As I said, we'll jump over to that soon. Uh, but let's kick it off with a little currency action. Euro US dollar. We make it to parity. We've bounced since then. Zooming in on the action this morning. Interesting, to put it lightly, man. You get an acceleration on a surprise hike by 50 basis points, and you're telling me even with a surprise hike, the euro doesn't even get a pop. Europe's got some problems, man, in a big way. Let's see how even the US dollar yen is trading. A little bit of volatility as well, pulling back a bit, 138.80 to 138.40 about, but this thing, no pausing whatsoever, man. You look at this chart, right? Just sitting right at the top of that price level. Remarkable. All right, let's jump to Tesla shares. So Tesla, you spiked to 778, but it's been a pretty slow ascent overnight, almost reaching the highs that we had at about 6 in the morning. Tesla shares trading at 772. Yesterday was Netflix out with their numbers. Yeah, they give almost it all back at the open, and then they climb higher. But yesterday was quite a day for some of these tech stocks. You had Disney, Roku, growth stocks trading higher in a big way. ARK Investments, they were trading higher as well. So Netflix benefiting from the overall consensus of that. I mean, check out ARK. Right, look at that move from 46 to 49 intraday yesterday for ARC for some of their stocks. Zoom was up, I saw a lot. Look at the action in Zoom, 102 to 109. Ends the session above 107 for Zoom. Uh, what else is she in? Roku, she has a big position in. They had quite an acceleration on the Disney number. Held on to a lot of those gains yesterday for Roku shares as well. And let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. So Amazon, they're buying a health company as well. We'll jump into that in a moment they're buying uh, one medical for roughly 3.9 billion with a b billion dollars amazon they're going to be up by about a dollar on the pre-market this thing's had quite an acceleration now as i mentioned earnings wise okay so amazon's next thursday is it microsoft also next thursday no microsoft is tuesday oh apple so apple and amazon are next thursday and it's going to be Microsoft and Google on Tuesday. Yeah, Microsoft and Google Tuesday. Easy to remember, the two A's. Apple and Amazon, the same day, Thursday. Microsoft and Google, the other two giants, Tuesday. We still have some companies out today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back, talking to our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. Fast Money. Right. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSC American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have S&P Futures. You're negative by two points right now. The NASDAQ 100, the only index in the green currently, up 43 points. The Dow is negative 90. You get the Russell off by six. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with your program, Fast Market. Kevin Hicks, Tom White, they break down the day's market action, walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. Everything they do has defined risk in this market, and that says a lot when we get the volatility we have. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, interesting morning setting up here with the ECB making a more hawkish move than we thought. How does that affect investors? Well, that makes the euro rally, the, the, the dollar sell-off, as the more hawkish group, the more hawkish entity, right, that currency rallies. Now, the dollar's made a pretty good comeback here from its early sell-off. It sold off pretty sharply when that happened, and now it's making a pretty nice comeback. So the dollar really close to unchanged here. We're going to see how that plays out during the day. Um, economic data was horrible, right? The trend in jobless claims is not good. Uh, moving now from the low 200s near 220 up, near, up over 240. Tommy, that's eventually that high-frequency data has to show up in non-farm payrolls and unemployment eventually if it keeps on this tra trajectory. So that's a bit concerning in terms of look, but uh, it's still right now, Tommy, all about earnings season. Netflix yesterday, Tesla after the bell, and today after the bell, snap, Tommy. And, uh, of course, we all await the main event of some of the tech earnings next week i was just going over you have uh microsoft and google on tuesday apple and amazon on next thursday uh along with many others of course you touched on what i was going to ask you about though man ecb so they go 50 basis points uh i think in the beginning of the week kevin i was talking about one article so we're going back to monday 
that had the odds at about 20%, they go to 50 basis points. By Tuesday, they jacked it up to 50% already, and by Thursday morning, we get there, uh, that they go 50. I have the Euro-US dollar pair up on the Thinkorswim platform right now, and you get quite a spike on that news from about 102 to 102.8, and then you give it all back. And what would you say, Kevin, if they said we're going to go 50 basis points, right? And the euro is not going to even move when we hear that we're going to go 50 basis points. Because my take, man, is that that means that they're in maybe even more trouble than we realized before we got that 50 basis points. Because if even that type of a hike, they're only hiking to basically zero. And they're going to be dealing with a lot of economic problems that are going to prevent them from hiking too much, potentially, uh, with the economy and the energy crisis they're dealing with. Pretty interesting action. Like you said, the day is young. But that surprises me, man. I think it's pretty revealing when you don't even see the euro dollar, like you mentioned, dollar bouncing back, even with a 50 basis point hike from the ECB. Yeah, I want it, it brings up the, the words of that uh, old philosopher Bruce Willis from Die Hard. Welcome to the party. Pal, right? I mean, finally, the ECB is getting involved and in starting to tackle inflation. And they mentioned, you know, a large first step was one of the, the phrases that they used. And so they're, they're behind the curve. If, if the U.S. is behind the curve, what is the ECB? They're extremely behind the curve. So, yeah, they raised for the first time in 11 years, and they hinted that uh, they could see firm, further normalization of their rates. So, yeah, Tommy, the uh, relationship between the dollar and euro, dollar spiked downward, euro spiked up. Now it's, it's reversed. So we'll see how it plays out during the day, though. As you know, there's volatility right when that announcement comes out. First moves are always interesting. But now let's see how they grind throughout the day. Let's see how these currencies finish the day, Tommy. Man, it's pretty awesome in terms of what we have for coming down the line. Now you add the ECB into it. And I just had a chart up here from a Bloomberg article, Kevin, just looking at the euro, euro area inflation. This chart just goes back to the year 2000, but all of them undeniable, the spikes we're dealing with. This one gets above 8% euro area inflation. Um, so all the ECB's done is they've gone to 0% for their lending, and we have an inflation rate just in the euro area of 8 plus percentage points. So we got a lot to play out, man. Uh, over the next X amount of months or whatever it be. You talked about one of the companies that's coming up, Kevin. What are you guys talking about at 12 o'clock coming up today? We're going to look at American Express in the first segment. They come out with the earnings before the open tomorrow morning. That should be a good look at the U.S. consumer. Uh, Lectfolio is going to cover Snap. That'll be a good one, the first look at social media and how ad spending is coming. And then we're in some discussions. It could be either Boston Beer or we might do Twitter, but talking about earnings in Twitter during a takeover might not be the best way to do. So we're discussing the third segment, Tommy. We may just go beer on a Thursday. Why not, man? Sam Adams, good old Boston yeah, exactly. logger. Uh, you know, I, Hard I, I, for Sam. me to talk out of, of talking about beer, Tommy. Let's make it happen, man. And from an investor <laughs> perspective, I want to see the conversation because it's pretty remarkable how hard seltzer, uh, what is it? They have the Truly brand, I believe, right? Is that Sam Adams? Um, they got one of those brands, man. Took off like hot fire and then the whole industry just kind of, guess what? I guess the, the hard seltzer not taking over the world, as I said to my friend, surprisingly enough. Uh, and you pull back from 1349 to 334. Everybody seems like loves Sam Adams beer, man. They just got ahead of themselves on that hard seltzer at some point up to 1349. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time, man. As always, we appreciate the education. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today. You have a great one and have a great weekend, man. We don't talk to you on Fridays or Mondays. And these days, Kevin, the next time we talk to you, we're going to be getting Microsoft and Google earnings on Tuesday as things fly. Well We'll have a lot to talk about the next time I, tell, I sure talk to you, and I'm man. looking forward to it, Tommy. Me too, as well, always. Thanks, Kevin. Have a great one, man. All right, folks, check out the program. You heard it. They're talking about three-gauge stocks. There is no better time to check out Fast Market than when we are in it in earnings season. Next week is just going to be awesome, even as an investor perspective. you got the S&P right now sitting at 39.55, okay? You take a look. Let's jump back to the S&P. We're bouncing off the 3.82. You're well above, this is a weekly, well above where we've been any time since the beginning of June. So you're talking about six weeks, okay? You're now at a price level you've been consolidating in for two and a half months in the S&P. And with everything going on, I'd say you should feel pretty comfortable with the S&P &S sitting at 4,000, folks, okay? With the potential 
for risk outliers that are going on right now. You have inflation at 9%. You have 1.9 jobs available for every job, uh, for every unemployed person looking for work. These things need to sort themselves out. You still have crude sitting at $95. It was just at 100 yesterday. That's going to weigh on the market for some considerable period of time. Housing prices, okay? Shelter makes up one-third of the CPI, shelter. Rents are not going to come crashing down anytime soon, folks, okay? Because the comparative number of buying a house right now is extreme, to put it lightly, especially in hot markets. In Florida, just the mindset of having to get over that if you bought something 12 months ago, you would have been paying 300 grand at 3.5%, and because you waited 12 months, you're gonna have to pay 400 grand at 5.5%. If you're smart enough to do the actual conversion of what that is on a payment, I think it would blow your mind, and I think you might say, you know what, I might just let the market pull back a bit and rent for a year. Well, guess what? A lot of people are saying that. There's a housing shortage anyway. Rental prices are going to stay elevated. That's going to weigh on the CPI number. The CPI number is going to weigh on the Fed. It's all going to weigh on the economy. And the market's sitting at 4,000. We have a VIX that is at one of the lowest levels we've seen in some time right now, going back to about April in the VIX. Stay tuned, folks. Come back for the open. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got the gold contract right now, negative by three dollars. You see the pop that gold got about twenty-five dollars almost to the upside on that ECB hike. You had euro strength, right? A little bit of a dollar weakness on a ECB hike that all kind of recoils, and you have gold recoiling a bit. But I showed you the euro US dollar. We'll jump back to that. The euro gave it all back. So gold still up $15 or so from where it was prior to that. We have some dollar action as well. Uh, but man, this market's just going to be super fluid for for the foreseeable future, folks. Please check out the Tiger Forex report. I talk about it all the time, but Forex is just moving so much right now. Not often, folks, does every trading show, or should they, right, cover the action in the euro and the market, but it's moving everything right now, and we're seeing it play out this morning. All right, let's jump over to Tesla. Tesla with their numbers last night, they trade higher on the open. You're up 3.5% for Tesla shares. Now, Bitcoin, Bitcoin did not like the Tesla earnings last night. Let's jump over to Bitcoin. Uh, there's your drop off at four o'clock for Bitcoin when the world finds out that Elon, guess what? He's selling his Bitcoin. But wait a second, wait a second. Elon said he wouldn't sell his Bitcoin. There's his tweet from March 14th. As a general principle, for those looking for advice from this thread, it's generally better to own physical things like a home or a stock in companies you think make good products. Um, I'm not sure what that, that then doing when inflation is high, then I'm not sure then nothing when inflation is high, whatever that says. But here's the key. I still own and won't sell my Bitcoin, Ethereum or Doge. I still own and won't sell my Bitcoin. Maybe he wasn't talking about Tesla's Bitcoin. Got to watch it. Or maybe he just doesn't even care. And he's just out there being a self-grandiose gentleman, as usual, pretending like he's not going to sell his Bitcoin. Meanwhile, let's pull up the headline. Tesla sold most of its Bitcoin to shore up car makers' liquidity. <laughs> you know, he's a brilliant man. He's changed the world probably for the better in many ways. Uh, but, man, he's pretty freaking arrogant, folks. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that are his biggest cheerleaders, and that's the thing that drives me so crazy about Elon. And he'll run them over in the street, man, if he feels like it on a, on a Thursday, okay? Uh, it's one thing to be out there and be a champion and say you might sell it if you need liquidity. It's another thing to be out there to be a champion, to tell people you're not going to sell it, right, because you believe in it. And meanwhile, what happens? Well, you sell most of it, and you don't even tell anybody. Of course you don't. Why would you tell somebody, right? Just like why would you file the correct regulatory filing when you're trying to take over Twitter when you can just not follow the rules and, 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 and have everybody try and sue you because you're the richest person in the world anyway? So Tesla's higher, but they sold roughly 75% of their Bitcoin to fiat currency as of the end of June at about a billion dollars of cash. That's a billion dollar sale of Bitcoin, folks, probably from the most important person in the world. OK, you don't want Elon selling Bitcoin just from a perspective of him cheerleading it across the Internet, etc. Um and yeah, of course, this should not be taken as some verdict on Bitcoin, and it shouldn't, just like it shouldn't when he's a cheerleader, okay? It's just that we were concerned about overall liquidity of the company given the COVID shutdowns in China. Yeah, he didn't say that, folks, when he was talking about being king of the world and, and never selling his Bitcoin, to bring it up again. I still own and won't sell. He didn't say I don't plan on selling unless we need the cash or the capital, right? Just be careful there. Um, and yeah. Yeah, they have diamond hands, all right? That was May of 2021. The tweet I just showed you was March. Not sure if they cover that tweet in here, um, but nonetheless. So he got out, gets out at about 30,000. Bitcoin got down to 17,000. Um, he's, he's, he's a brilliant person, as I say. He's, he's not a fool, folks, with his money, where he's buying and where he's selling. Uh, and nonetheless, they sell. They sell a billion dollars. We'll see how that plays out overall. But just be careful um, believing anything that he says on a public platform as it's all pretty self-serving in a big way. And you see what it does to Bitcoin. Um, not that bad of a day, I would say, for Bitcoin, considering we have the markets already negative. You only have Bitcoin trading back to 22,670. Meanwhile, we find out that Tesla just sold a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin because they're worried about showing up their their balance sheet. That's not going to change anytime soon. All right, China's going to be dealing with the zero COVID policy for some time. I don't imagine the Tesla's going to be ramping up their Bitcoin purchases anytime soon yet again. So we'll see where that one goes. Okay, let's jump around to what else I got pulled up here. AT&T, they're out with their numbers. 
They cut the cash flow outlook on higher spending overdue bills. Yeah, so they cut the forecast for free cash flow this year by $2 billion. $2 billion. Uh, they now expect, pretty decent numbers though, $14 billion of free cash flow. Must be nice, not bad. Uh, about a billion dollars of the difference was tied to the timing of customer collections. Not sure why that plays out to a billion dollars. Um, the gloomier outlook overshadowed second quarter results that topped estimates for profit and wireless subscriber growth. Uh, AT&T a little bit lower on those numbers. They expect to generate $10 billion in free cash flow in the second half of the year, and discounts on phones are still luring customers to sign up, adding 813,000 regular monthly phone subscribers in the second quarter. Market was looking for 554, big numbers, right? So they had big numbers. Uh, earnings, 65 cents versus 62. Revenue came in at estimates. So they come in at revenue, they beat on earnings, they beat on subscribers, but free cash flow, it's a problem. You jump over to AT&T, as this market sells off a little bit, ooh, baby, there's a drop off for you. Not sure what's going on in this conference call, but I don't think it's good. AT&T off 10.3% right now. You jump over, whew, bummer, Verizon, they're all getting hit, man. Verizon off 4.3% on those weak AT&T numbers, especially coming in. Maybe they said something on that conference call, because look at that drop off at 845 for Verizon. What's T-Mobile Sprints? Is that it? Yeah, T-Mobile down 4.6. They're all getting hit right now with the S&Ps down 18, NASDAQ down about 39. Let's see how Tesla's trading as the market opens. They catch a bid. Tesla up about 4%. We check in on yesterday's action. Netflix giving back some of it, up 1.6%. Disney negative 1.2% right now. Roku shares off about 6 tenths percent. Some of those growth stocks, Zoom, positive on today by about 8 tenths percent. We see how ARC is trading off, down about 7 tenths. All right, jumping around to other headlines we had up here. I talked about Amazon. So they are going to buy uh, primary health care provider One Medical for roughly $3.9 billion. Now, you have the senior vice president of Amazon Health Services saying that Amazon hopes to reinvent the health care experience from how people book appointments to the experience of being seen by a physician Lots of opportunity to improve both, both the quality and experience. We give people back valuable time in their days. I would agree. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Now, I have some Amazon shares in a retirement account, folks. And they are innovators on many different platforms. In healthcare, you know, we spend so much money on healthcare, folks, and it is just horrible in general for the amount of money we spend. I guarantee that's what they're looking at, and they love the idea of the third-party payer system, I'm sure, right? I mean, the way that healthcare companies collect money from insurance companies and the prices are so obscure, obscure that nobody can price shop, it's something that needs to be remedied. Uh, Amazon, they already own the pill company, right? It's a pill, whatever they bought, that sends medication. So I would not be surprised as they get into more and more into this area in terms of healthcare. And we got a, we got a pediatrician for our kids, and we're jumping to a new pediatrician coming up next month. Not happy with some of the things going on in general, but one of the worst parts, gotta wait like two hours every time we go in there with little kids to see them. What is up with that? Not a good experience. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now, negative by five points. You catch a little bit of a lift off the spike low we got at 930. You trade down to 3941. Since then, we're up about 16 points. You put this thing on a minute chart to see that recoil. Down we go for the first five minutes of trading, and we're right back to where we kick things off. NASDAQ 100 up by 21. Let's see how Tesla's trading as they progress. Yeah, market's liking the numbers, man. You're up 5.7% for Tesla. Bitcoin, on the other hand, down about $1,000 to 22715 we jump around to what else we got going on. Jobless claims out this morning, rising last week to the highest, what was it, an eight-month uh, eight high. Yeah. Initial unemployment claims increased last week to 251,000. Continuing claims up 51,000, largest advance since November. Pretty undeniable that the trend is upwards at this point. You know, this data is volatile, so you take an average of it, that would be the best case, but no denying that trend that we've been in since March or April. It's now approaching August, folks. And this data comes on a weekly basis. Initial jobless claims going back to a level we have not seen. Yeah, look at that. Since uh, about November of 2021, 51,000 is what continuing claims go up to 1.38 million. Remember, continuing claims one week delayed versus the initial claims number. So continuing claims is the data for the week ended July 9th. Okay, so we're getting a little stale data when you look at the continuing claims uh, initial, we were only talking about last week. On an adjusted basis, initial claims increased 248, we'll call it 249,000. Unadjusted claims in Massachusetts rose by more than 14,000. California, South Carolina, and Georgia also posted increases. New York claims fell last week after jumping in the prior period when there were more layoffs in transportation and warehousing, health care, and educational services. All right, jumping back to that Amazon story real quick. What I did want to mention is, this company, so they operate a network of boutique primary care practices and also offer a range of telemedicine services. That's like a huge exploding area, right? People don't even need a primary care physician anymore. A lot of people will use uh, one of those just walk-in clinic type places. They become their primary care physician. So many services that we go through, folks, should be able to be done through telemedicine, right? Think about it, that I understand you're going to get a lot of old school doctors, okay? And I don't even want to use that term because it's somewhat derogatory to call them old school, like they can't keep up. But they like to see people in person. And there's probably good reason for some of that, right? But, excuse me, so many different instances where you may need to see a doctor, okay? You just tell them, you know, your symptoms. Maybe you need a small prescription, something like that. 
telemedicine seems like it's an easy way to go. And then the fact, right, bringing kids into it. Now I got to bring the kids in there. They got to get um, vaccines, et cetera, right? Tommy, I mean, the first couple of years of your life, folks, you're getting a lot of vaccines, okay? Vaccines didn't used to be so controversial, and it's amazing how you go into the doctor's office, and if you talk about any other vaccine, uh, it's normal business, but somehow you bring up the COVID vaccine, it gets political. Nonetheless, little kids get lots of vaccines, folks, and so you got to be in person, but so many different instances. It stinks having to go into the doctor for regular visits, though, because I always think we're going to get sick, you know, and we've gotten sick, especially when you got young kids and you got to bring them in there all the time. Telemedicine, primary care physician, so this company... 188 medical offices in 25 markets. They've got 767,000 members, and they reported a net loss of $91 million on revenue of $254 million. Pretty interesting, right? Uh, and nonetheless, $4 billion is about what they pay for. Yeah, and so One Life Healthcare is the parent of One Medical, and they open 66% higher as they're selling that off. Pill pack, that's what they had. Pill pack in 2018 for 750 million, using that acquisition to launch its own online pharmacy years later. And the genius part about pill pack, if you're not familiar, is that many people have to take many different pills. And so what they do is they package everything so that it's all set for you to take on whatever days you need to take it. Okay, as opposed to sending you 10 different bottles and you have to pull out exactly what bill you're, pill you're supposed to take on which day, they do that for you. And for many people, and that's probably the most lucrative people in the business, right? You're getting the people that are ordering multiple, multiple prescriptions, unfortunately, for whatever they're dealing with. Those are the people you want to have under your system, for sure. Nonetheless, Amazon getting into healthcare. That'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Okay, jumping around to what else we got going on. Earnings, Domino's out with their numbers, miss expectations as the pizza chain cites tough labor market and higher costs. It's gotta be a tough one, man. Trying to um, hire workers in, in, in that demographic, in that pay. It seems like there is a lot of competition. They beat estimates on revenue, but they miss on earnings. Might be a common theme for many companies struggling this last quarter, raised the outlook for food prices for fiscal 2022. Ongoing shortage of delivery drivers hurt the chain sales again this quarter. They make 282 versus 291. They slightly beat on revenue. And this thing has really pulled back. DPZ is their symbol, I believe. There it is. You're up 3% on those numbers. We jump back to longer term on this equity, though. Well, we're getting quite a bounce now off of those lows. Look at that. You were down as far as 316. You're up to 423. A lot of the equity is not bouncing as much as Domino's Pizza had. You're now above where you came into the year 2020 in. You came into 2020 at about 4,000. You're 5% above that price level, well off the 567. Out of curiosity here, let's take this one off. Let's see how far we're bouncing into this on a Fibonacci basis. Just blowing past the 382 for a bounce here to 424 and some strong numbers, up 3.2%. The labor market's going to be an interesting one to see how it plays out as well. Because if all these companies are struggling to get workers, that's not going to allow inflation to come down as easily as the Fed may want. Retirees, they're going to see their monthly Social Security checks jump by 175 bucks next year. Not sure that's enough. I'll answer that question. Um, probably not enough is a better way to put it. Is that enough to keep up with inflation? Excuse me. Monthly benefits for retirees could rise 10.5% in 2023. That would amount to $175 increase to an average payment of 1668 Meanwhile, the benefit... Could be as high as 11.4 if inflation remains at its current clip. Yeah, some big numbers in a big way, man. So it makes sense that Social Security, I mean, Social Security is supposed to keep up with inflation. And that's quite a tall order right now. All right, what else we got? American Airlines out with their numbers. Forecast third quarter profit, but scales back growth after flight disruptions. What are we dealing with? We're dealing with human capital. Again, it expects to be in the black in the third quarter. Another sign of strong travel demand, even at high prices. Uh, they're going to limit its expansion this year, though. Human capital, man. 
Second quarter profit, $476 million, up from basically nothing a year ago. Second quarter revenue, $13.4 billion, up 12% from before the pandemic. Up 12% from before the pandemic, right? Even though they flew 8.5% less than the same period in 2019. So they're, they're flying, excuse me, they're flying almost 10% less travel. And they're making 12% more. You got to do it with crude at 100 bucks and inflation raging. They make 76 cents. They basically come in at revenue. They jump over to American. This is going to be longer time. The market, they don't like it. You're down 6.2%. We'll take a look at some of the airlines. We'll take a look at Carnival down big on an offering today as well. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got American down 6.3% on their numbers. Let's jump around to see how some of the other airlines are reacting. Delta, they were down lower. You catch a little bit of a lift. Now only down about 3%. You jump over United. Ooh, United. Uh, so what is it? United and American? Yeah, so United was out last night. They tank. They tank further on the American. American is out this morning. They trade lower on United and American, down 6%. Now, I mentioned Carnival. They've got a million dollars offering or something going on. They're offering shares. Let's see. What do they got going on? Let me pull them up to see where we are on Carnival. What do they push out? Here we go. 
a billion dollar common stock offering. Yeah, I figured it couldn't be a million. Uh, they plan to use the proceeds for general corporate purposes. Now, here's what I will say is I've been talking about that they got a lot of debt, man. I and, and I don't know if a billion really saves them. Um, I talked about yesterday, maybe we make it back within that channel line. Not so quick, man. Maybe Carnival, that's the turnaround where they're showing up investments because they see potentially a demand problem coming from, from whatever it is, whether it's the new variant, whether it's just the economy. And it, it, a billion dollars is not going to be enough to save this company, folks, if they have any type of demand shock any further with the type of debt they have. Down 12.5% today. Norwegian. Yeah, Norwegian didn't do an offering. They're down 8% today. Okay. Carnival needed a billion dollars. They went to the market. They put out an offering to get it. But be careful of those equities, folks. You can play them. And if you get a pop, you might get a heck of a pop, man. But you just better be, be okay with uh, going BK in those equities. Like you see, you wake up yesterday, you wake up today, 13% gone. And check out the euro dollar, man. You are right back to parity. Interesting. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps right now up by three points. NASDAQ up by 34. Dow and the Russell barely in the red right now. Bitcoin down about $1,000. Tesla selling almost all of their Bitcoin, about 75% of at least. They got about 200 million bucks still in digital tokens or digital currency on their balance sheet. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming right back. Thanks for starting your day off with me.